What's up, my friends? This is Post Production Pi, editor in chief for srlounge.com. Welcome to another installment of our weekly ordinary to extraordinary raw edit featuring the SR Lounge Lightroom preset system V5. Now, as always, we're going to be demonstrating how to create our effect using the preset system, and then we're going to be going through the actual settings just to help everybody understand what's going into each look and effect. You know, that way, everybody that's watching, whether you have the presets or whether you don't, you can still benefit. Now, if you don't have the presets and you are interested in learning more, then be sure to check out the link below in the description to take you to the SR Lounge store where you can get started. So in this video, we're going to be going over one more example of a nice natural environmental HDR portrait using the preset system. So let's take a look again at how this image was shot. We're going to hit I to bring up our information, and this was shot on a Canon 5D Mark III. It was on a 24mm f1.4 L lens. Uh, this is the Mark II version of that lens, and this is a lens that... I kind of have this love-hate relationship with it. It's really only good for this one effect that you basically see here, where basically we can shoot a semi-wide shot and have a, a nice amount of bokeh. But with the new 2470 Mark II, we get a very similar look out of that lens. Not Maybe not quite as much bokeh, but I don't know. I have limited uses for this lens. We're actually trying to get rid of it. But uh, it's still a good lens. It's just not for me, at least not right now. All right, we shot this at 1 1 of a second at f2 and ISO 200. Now, remember the rule when you're shooting an HDR image and you're trying to get the max amount of dynamic range possible, leave the ISO at the lowest possible native ISO setting. We had to bump it to ISO 200 here because we're already at f2. I don't want to go any lower because it's going to make the image unsharp. We're already at 1 1 of a second, which is going to be revealing a little bit of motion in the water. So I don't want to go any slower because the water is going to get more blurry, which might be a cool effect if I had a tripod pod, but I didn't. Or at least I didn't have one that I wanted to put in the water. All right, so at ISO 200, we do lose a little bit of dynamic range, but we're still pretty okay. Compared to ISO 100, we might lose maybe a half stop of dynamic range, but if you go to 400, that's when you start losing one, two, three, four stops of dynamic range as you keep going up. All right, so at 200, we're still somewhat okay. All right, now let's take a look at this histogram. You can see in the histogram we have exposed once again to make sure we maximize all of the detail in the image. We're pushing from edge to edge our shadows, and the shadows are perfect in this shot, where it's right to the edge but not quite touching. And we're pushing as much highlights as we can while we're still retaining as much as possible without dropping our shadows even further. Okay, so this is again a perfect example of a correct exposure for this type of scene. Once again, when you're shooting this type of scene, just turn on your live view, look at the histogram in the live view, and dial in the settings to maximize your histogram or maximize your tonal range that you're capturing. All right, so we're going to go to the base soft category. Actually, before we do that, let's do one quick thing and just make sure. I see a fleck here. I think that's a bird, but I still want to check for other dust. I don't see any other dust, and that looks like it was definitely a bird. So we're going to kill our bird. Not literally. We're going to kill him digitally. I do see a fleck here. Let's kill that guy. Okay. So now we're good on that. Let's reset the curve and let's go back to the top. We're going to go and uh, start flipping through our HDR presets and see where we like. So as we click up, you can see more and more shadows being revealed. Now, for this type of shot, I'm cool with going with uh, uh, HDR Max or HDR Heavy. With the HDR Max, we will have a little bit more shadow range, but it is going to have a little bit more... Well, we're going to have a little more work to do in the skin tones. Um, and also, it might be a little bit less natural looking. So I'm going to opt for a little bit more natural and just go with the HDR Heavy. But if you guys like the Max, then go with the Max. All right, now from here, we're going to flip down to our exposure. And I'm just going to tweak the exposure a bit by flipping around to see where I like it. So I think I'm going to like it around probably 0.5. And here we have a good mixture of range. So if you look now at our histogram, we're really maximizing our total range. We have a nice amount of shadows, nice amount of highlights. It looks really quite, quite nice if I were to use that word one too many times. All right, so this is looking pretty good right now. Let's go over to the right side now and let's make a little adjustment to our temperature. Not that big of adjustment. Gosh, Lightroom, can't you tell what I'm trying to do? Okay, we're gonna raise up our tint just a little bit. I wanna get a little more of the pinks into it. And then, uh, you know, what I'm going to do is back off the temperature a little until I can get the right setting for pink. So this is something I like to do a lot. I, I basically neutralize the temperature, find my right setting for pinks, basically, which is going to be right around plus 19, and then add back temperature to taste. You're like a chef. You're like a post-production chef. We're all post-production chefs, and we're creating masterpieces of the post-production version not culinary arts. All right, so 0.5 looks good. We can go up to 0.6 if we want to. 
That looks right around that range. I'm going to make my other adjustments. If you want to make any more fine tuning and tweaking at that point, we can. Now, all the other adjustments are going to be done with our adjustment brushes and graduate filters and so forth. So let's take a look at that one preset and where we got from, from the beginning. So here's that original image. Here is the after image so far. So far. If you do P90X, Tony Horton loves to say so far. All right, so I'm just hitting backslash, by the way, to get the before and the after. We're looking good so far. Let's go ahead and make some more adjustments. Or actually, let's go ahead and go over the settings first. So we're at uh, 6500 temp. All this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. Once again, it's the same as before with the HDR presets. We're raising contrast to 75 to compensate for our flattening out of our tones. So we're pulling down highlights and whites to negative 75. Shadows and blacks go up to plus 75. Same adjustments for skin that we have down here. We have clarity at negative 10. Again, this is one of those images where you could leave clarity at zero if you want, but I kind of still like it at negative 10. It flattens out the highlights just a little bit more. We have vibrance and saturation at negative five a piece. And if we go down, we can see our same HSL adjustment down here for skin tones. With our curve, we have the same curve applied. This is really all the same stuff that you guys have done. If you guys have done the previous ones, then you'll know exactly what's going on. So you can skip this part. So again, if we want a little more color in this image, we can just double click on vibrance and saturation to take them back to zero. We do have a little bit of skin tone here, but we're gonna do um, our skin tone problems. We're gonna do a little modification to kind of tweak that in just a second. So I'm not too worried yet. If we do wanna reduce again, we can, but let's just leave it right there for now. Let's go down and check out our detail. I'm gonna zoom in and uh, let's see, our noise reduction, everything, sharpening, all those standard settings look totally fine. Okay, zooming back out, we can see our lens videoing. Again, that looks totally fine. If we want to pull it in, we can. This is really optional on this image. And one thing, again, if you like to just kind of see what you like better, then just go and flip between the different presets and see where you want to go. Now, I don't like this darkening effect that I get up here. I really want it to be more neutral. Uh, and I'm going to stick with that reverse veneering light because we will pull down a little bit of this uh, this sky, but I don't want it to be in the corners really. I want to keep it kind of even from edge to edge, and except for the selective darkening that I apply later on. So let's just leave that right there. Now, going back to the top, we've gone through our settings, so let's select an adjustment brush and let's start working here. What I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to select the general all-purpose detail answer. We can also do a sky cloud ocean either way. Um, what we're going to do is drag this just over the water and we can get a nice little pop in the water. I'm gonna take it right up to their clothing and then just go right underneath and up to the other side. Keeping this very subtle and I'm gonna hold down Alt now or Option on a Mac. We're gonna bring the size up and I'm gonna kind of pull it out right here just to create a nice feathered edge so we don't see it anywhere really in the dock. Okay, I'm also gonna shrink down our uh, eraser brush and we're just gonna go over the edges of them so we don't have any, whoops, that's too small. It's a little laggy. All right, so we're just going to go over them and just make sure we don't have any of this detail enhancing over their legs. Okay, that adjustment brush is really on the more subtle side, so I'm not too worried. And I'm actually going to dial it back just a little more. We can click and see if that ah, Lightroom, 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 you're not being nice to us today. Um, so if you're in Lightroom 5, we click and drag and have that little bug, then... Uh, you know what, we're gonna have to make adjustments over here. But if you're in Lightroom 4, you can click and drag on the point just to adjust incrementally. I'm gonna pull it back right over here and just kind of adjust everything down a little bit just to bring it and make it a little more subtle. Okay, that looks really nice right there. What I'm gonna do now is let's go and create one more adjustment brush. And what we're gonna do is actually de-HDRify their skin, all right? So we have a preset in here. It's called Light Unenhanced HDR Skin. So all we gotta do is zoom in. We're gonna shrink the size down just so it's nice and comfortable painting into their skin. And we're just gonna paint it right over their faces and over their arms and, and whatever other skin that might be showing, okay? So let's go over this part. It's very subtle, so if you cover a little bit of the hair, don't worry. It's uh, It just does a nice job of pulling out that additional saturation and color that's added in with the HDR effects that we're doing. You'll see it once we zoom out, it'll look really nice and pretty. I like that word, pretty, pretty. Okay, let's go there. All right, let's pull it out of his arm here. It looks like we have a little bit on our back showing, so let's just grab it out of our back. There we go. And let's go down to the legs. This couple, I love it when you have, you know, beautiful couples make it so easy to photograph, like perfect skin, perfect everything. Easy day for photographers, so thank you guys. All right. Okay, let's zoom out and take a look. 
and this is looking really nice and solid. I'm going to brighten up just a titch. And uh, if we want, again, we can always adjust that effect down just by dragging and sliding or just making adjustments here. I'm going to lessen the contrast. I'm, I'm, I'm increasing the contrast a bit so we don't have too strong of a D or, you know, light unenhancing effect, basically. All right, so that looks pretty solid right there. Now what we're going to do is grab a radial filter. Once again, you can get the same effect by painting in with an adjustment brush. So if you have to use adjustment brushes if you're in Lightroom 4, just paint in around the area and you're going to get a similar effect. We're going to use the radial filter. We're going to go to a negative 0.5 stop. And I'm just going to pull it out right from here. And just going to go out to a nice even area. I don't want it to be too strong. So what we're going to do is drag that feather down. Let's go to about 60 and then let's bring up the exposure so it's very, very subtle, the amount that we're adjusting. Okay, I'm going to brighten up one notch again. And with those adjustments made, I'm going to say we're done. I might just check my temperature and see if I like it where it's at. I might warm it up just a little bit more. I kind of like it a little bit more warm. It's really up to you guys. All right, so this is looking really nice right now. Again, we have a very nice, natural kind of HDR look where we brought out the dynamic range in the shot. Look at our beautiful histogram. We have all of our tonal range intact. And let's check out the before and after by hitting backslash. So again, here's the before. Here's our after. Nice looking image. You guys can adjust our final, you know, kind of exposure and temperature and everything to taste. I might leave it a little bit more on the cool side. I think I liked it a little bit cooler. Has a good look. All right, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. And we'll see you all in the next video.